here it's for not only developers but business users or anybody really to understand um, what is going on in a flowchart and having to dig through your application code. Um, it is also high level, so we're able to describe high level concepts within our uh, business process. You know, once you start executing your deploy and you execute your process, we provide, JPM provides tooling support for you to monitor your uh, business process as well to see what is going on during the execution um, of your business processes. Now, also once you start monitoring it, you, have, you can continuously improve since you can see what's going on, you can have several iterations of your business processes that improve uh, execution or, or whatever is important um, uh, to do. Now, we also increase agility and that means, what that means is that you can at runtime change your business process or the definition of your business process which alters the execution at runtime. And also we think that using BPM it ultimately increase, increases the speed of your development. Of course, you have a setup cost, you know, like anything else. But once you have set up your business process management solution, we feel that creating business processes in the future um, really uh, can be done fairly quickly. All right, so what are some of the key characteristics of JPM? As we said, JPM focuses on executable. So what does that mean? The processes that you actually execute in the runtime. The core of JPM is the process engine. And the process engine is basically a Java component. It's very lightweight. It's very, very fast. And as, you know, the first question, feel free at any time jump in. This is not, you know, a monologue here by any means. Jump in and we can talk and, 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 and try to answer any questions here. Um, since JPM 5, we started representing our processes, our definitions, and also our execution semantics via BPM 2.0 specification. And down the slides, we will take a look at what is BPM 2.0 and why we think it is important to use it in, in, in JPM. Um, the core process engine can be embedded because it's just a Java component, so you can take it and embed it in your own application. Or you can run it as a service where your applications can, can access it as, as a service, for example. Now, we don't at JPM only focus on execution. So the core component, you know, core process uh, engine is great, but we really focus on the entire BPM lifecycle. So we want to allow you to be particip participate in all the entire lifecycle, which includes, of course, modeling of your business processes, deployment of your business processes monitoring uh, of your business processes, and it, of course is execution of your business processes, and then monitoring. Um, since this life cycle involves many different steps, of course, like anything else, you have many different types of users that um, are, are going to be interacting with this life cycle. So at JUPM, what we try to do is allow developers, business users, end users, you know, you pretty much name it, you know, the whole group, anybody to be involved um, in several steps of this BPM lifecycle. Now, JVPM is open source. It is ASL licensed. It is what we think currently the most advanced BPM open source engine that's out there right now. And we have uh, written the engine such that we can create very adaptive and very flexible business processes. And down the road, when we get into those type of details, we'll, we'll kind of take, you know, talk about that some more. Any questions? Uh, can we draw the BPM man diagrams in a different tool and uh, push them into this JPM, uh, or should it be drawn inside this? System? <coughs> Yeah, the, the question is inter interoperability, I can't speak. Um, basically, we'll come down to that in the demo, we'll talk about it later in the slides, but your quick question right now is yes. Um, the BPM 2.0 specification is something moving forward that is going to be reused and we think is going to be the standard going forward for business pro describing business processes. And as such, 
um, we use the BPM2 standard. Now we'll talk about how JBPM implements and how much of the BPM2 standard JBPM implements and what we focus on in the slides later. So I think your, your, your question will be answered. Sorry, you know, no, 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 go ahead. And, and if, you, if I don't answer your question at the end, you know, at any time you can. Alright, so what is this BPM life cycle that I'm talking about? And we think that it involves, you know, this is one representation. So you go from modeling your processes, business processes, deploying them, executing them, and monitoring them. And you can see different types of users that can be involved. For example, you have a business analyst and a developer, and they have to work together in order to model your business process. So you're a uh, business analyst, for example, describes visually or draw, you know, uses our tooling to, to, to uh, describe the process and he has to collaborate then with the business developer who, for example, adds execution semantics to it. Um, at the same time, during execution, a common requirement in BPM is to have user interaction. You know, so, so for example, you, you guys heard probably about human tasks and things like that. So you have to have some end user interaction with your processes. But at the same time, maybe it's a system administrator that's dealing with execution. The same thing for monitoring. It could be a sysadmin monitoring your processes while they're executing. It could be a, the end user. So really, you know, you, you have the interaction with a lot of different people that we try to support and, and allow them to be participants in this life cycle. <laughs> so, well, JVPM is very modular. Um, if you can see here, we describe some of the big uh, components of JVPM, um, listing and buying the life cycle. And if we look again, here is the core engine, it's under execution. The core engine is the only part of JVPM that you have to use. And that's it. JVPM is not some big monolithic BPM suite that you have to download and have to use as is. Again, we're open source and it's completely modular. Every single thing in here, except of course the core engine, you can either choose to use or not to use, or you can replace with some other solution that you might you know, want to use. And we'll kind of give examples of that. Um, some of the other core services that live alongside the core engine, one of them is the history log. And the history log has to do with persistence, you, know, you guessed it. Um, the history log allows us to see what is the current state of our process execution and how did we get there. So we can query the data or the information that has happened in the past. Um, a very common you know, scenario or use case or, or requirement for BPM is user interaction. So you have um, the ability for users to interact to complement and actually execute parts of your business process uh, in front of that. And for that you need to manage these uh, user interactions. And for that you typically need some sort of task service. Um, JVPM5 by default it comes with an implementation of a task service based on the WS um, human task um, specification. But as we said before, it's, it's, it's very modular. You can replace this implementation that it comes with an implementation that you have in house or some other one that you would like to use. So you can plug and play more or less. Now if we go down all the way down to the model, JPM um, <coughs> provides, we provide two complementary solutions as far as for modeling goes. We have the Eclipse editor or plugin, JPM uh, 5 plugin, which extends Eclipse to allow business process management. So you can do really cool things like Debugging, you know, you can create test cases from your uh, business process definition, so from your PPM2. Um, you can, we, we have the ability to also debug business processes that involve uh, human uh, interactions as well. So, on the other side, we have the web based designer, and you guys will see a lot of that today. The uh, web based designer targets. Um, more of a business user, so it's a completely web-based um, <coughs> editor that is integrated with some of the other tooling that we have, and we'll, the demo will involve you guys will you know a lot about it by the time we're done today. But it's more of a collaboration environment. 
So we understand that the web is not a clips, you know, it's not a developer environment, but we're trying to add uh, features that are important for business analysts and business users and, and, and collaborate, co collaborating with developers um, in, 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 in during the life cycle of modeling and, and, and deployment. Um, our two uh, solutions for modeling have to interact somehow with each other. And for that, we use uh, the governor repository. And we'll take a look at that as well in the demo. <coughs> the governor repository is also a web application, so it's web based. And what it does, it allows us to edit process assets. And not only processes like business processes, but also rules, you know, if you want to. Um, any type of assets like our task forms, so we'll take a look at how the forms that we can generate for users to interact with your business processes. But it uh, provides an underlying repository to which both of the editors can write to and read from, and that uh, enables a co collaboration environment. By looking all the way up for monitoring, well, for that we use the JVPM console, and again, it's a web based application. And what it allows us to do is the functionality is you know, you can start your business process, you can see the current active task list so you can see what is currently uh, what users are waiting to complete what tasks what tasks do they need to complete things like that um, we uh, the JPM console also allows you to see visually at what point is my process currently so you can monitor that and also you can see the current state of information and look at that in the demo as well of what's going on with, uh, with the process right now another thing that the JPM console allows you to do is reporting so, for example, we use Eclipse BERT and we provide, you know, some uh, reports already that we think might be useful to users. But you, the power of that is that you can plug in, for example, the history log and query some information from your own other existing systems to come up with some sort of reports that make sense to you. Where is um, uh, ESV in this field? Does, does this sit on the top of an ESB or is it independent? Uh, ESB is independent. At, at, at uh, JBoss we do have uh, a SOAP platform which includes an implementation of an ESB. Uh, JVPM can be complement an ESB. It does not replace by any means. But the way most of the time, uh, from my experience, you guys can tell me, uh, that people use uh, some JVPM within an ESB is for, you know, VPN so business process around messages. You know, how does my messages go, where do they go, and things like that. So that description. But um, <coughs> it does not replace the ESB at all. That's not. But it can work on the top of ESB. It can complement the ESB solution. Yes, just like for example Jules scan with the rules so you can you, you know mess the messaging rules, <coughs> VPN can also help with that as well. So message routing, things like that. You know. That's, that's not the use cases. So during the development, is the care taken to that, uh, I mean, the interoperability with ESB itself, is that taken care of or is it, a, is it developed as an independent part? Um, JPM will be uh, uh, in integrated into JBoss um, uh, ESB with uh, SOAP 6, which is upcoming. With SOAP 5, um, we still use JPM 3. So once you know we, we come out with with um, SOAP six version six, JVPM will be integrated, and so that's a good, it means you can start using. Um, as far as how the integration goes.